You went to high school at kind of an interesting time. Shawnee Mission North was Shawnee Mission High School. That was the only school, but sophomore year, they were preparing for the split because Shawnee Mission East would open in the fall. And they created this internal competition. What was that like? It was amazing. My sophomore year, we were literally up the down staircase at Shawnee Mission High School because we were all there together last year with one school. All of our all of our sophomore athletic teams, our football, sophomore football teams, sophomore basketball teams were all divided. The ones who were staying at North and the ones who were going to Shawnee Mission East, the boundary lines had already been drawn when we were in the ninth grade and junior high. So when we got there as sophomores, we knew who was going, who was staying. We all had our separate schedules, uh, athletic schedules. And in our last sophomore football game that year, we played in the stadium under the lights against the other sophomore team that was going to go to East the next year. So what was it like the next couple of years when North played East with the same kids who'd been neighbors and friends? Exactly. We, the rivalry was there. We, you know, and, and as you know from the Shawnee Mission School District, we were all rivals. Everybody was, after we got to five high schools, everybody was a rival. There was no one more important than the other. Everybody wanted to beat Shawnee Mission North, Shawnee Mission West, Shawnee Mission South, Shawnee Mission East, Shawnee Mission Northwest. From 1969 to 75, Shawnee Mission football dominated the state. North won state three in a row. Shawnee Mission West, South, back to North. SMS in 1975, John Davis won two out of three. Did you realize at the time in the 60s, 70s, and 80s how special a district Shawnee Mission was? You bet. There was no question about it. It was not only special from the area of athletics, but it was just from the, the staffs at those high schools and from the, the student athletes at those high schools were uh, very special. And I'm sure there are a lot of special places in the country, but Shawnee Mission School District at that time was extremely special. No disrespect to all the football coaches who are physical education instructors, but you're in the classroom teaching bookkeeping, accounting, business law economics did you enjoy that i did i really did i really enjoyed the uh that that phase of it and and uh probably that at, at the end of my career was probably the thing that i still felt i could do a lot of coaching but i had pretty much worn myself out after 43 years of being in the classroom we like to talk about coaching trees in sports roy williams had a great one basketball at KU and Coach Purdy at Shawnee Mission West as well, 60s and 70s. You, Tony Severino, Dave Smith was going to be head football coach at West one day. Nip Shepard was going to be the athletic director at the time. Did you know what a special group that was? We knew that Coach Purdy was very special. Uh, when Coach Purdy came, my Coach Purdy came to Shawnee Mission West my second year, which was 1967, and, and the Shawnee Mission West program needed to be turned around at that point. We had been through, uh, they had been through two pretty difficult seasons. They were very good when they first opened in 62, kind of fell off in the 65, 66. And so when Coach Purdy came there, we knew he was very special because we all of a sudden spent a lot more time coaching and a lot more time working and a lot more time on the practice field than we had spent the previous year. Coach Purdy tried college for a couple of years. Coach Fambro took him on his staff two years at KU. Was the college game ever a temptation for you? Not really. I think probably because of my family, I did, was not interested in the college situation because at that time you really had to move around a lot. And having had the privilege of having four daughters, I really wasn't interested in having them move often, you know, during that time. So we felt stability and staying at this time, at that time in Johnson County was important to us. You won a state championship as the head coach in 1985, Pat Richard been very successful as a high school coach, was the quarterback, and those teams, 84-85, kind of a smash-mouth, mutter mentality. Did that group, that style, fit what you were all about as a coach? Uh, I, th I think so. We, we, it was usually our goal to be back in the locker room by 9 o'clock, and so we couldn't hardly throw any passes in order to go play a game at 7, and we traveled every week because there were only two district stadiums, so we traveled all the time, and our goal was always to be back by at 9 o'clock to get in the locker room. So we pretty much ran the football, and, and 1985 was 
we, we were no faster on a perfectly dry field than we were on a muddy field. And it seemed like in 1985, it rained or snowed almost every week and it fit right into our thing. And even the state championship game, we played at Kansas State and it was in the snow and they were brooming the field as we were moving up and down the field. And Dodge City had tremendous speed and four by 100 state champions and thing, and we were just the same. We were no slower, or faster than we were normally, and we ran straight ahead, so it was good. You bounced around a little bit by choice. You were at Shawnee Mission West, went to Shawnee Mission East to be the head coach for a couple of years, back to West, original Lee Summit, then Lee Summit North. Why were you willing to take chances and move instead of just the safe thing would have been to stay at Shawnee Mission West for 40 years? But the thing that attracted me to Lee Summit High School in 1990 when Coach Purdy left uh, to go to Lawrence High School was the fact that I could go someplace having grown up in a district that had multiple high schools and coached in the Shawnee Mission School District for all those years with five high schools to go to Lee Summit and it be the only school in the town. And that attracted me in being a one school, one high school district. And I was there one year and in the beginning of my second year, Dr. Williams came in and said, we're gonna build a new high school. I go, gosh, I wish I didn't know this. <laughs> <laughs> Harold Wamsgans is the only coach in this program's history. And he knows how to turn the Bronx around. Our kids have to believe that we have an opportunity to be good. And, uh, you know, we, once we get through that Big 8 conference, we're going to have Rockhurst and Joplin and Lee Summit in our district, so we're going to have 10 big weeks. I remember when Lee Summit North was going to open up, and I called you that summer. You said, yeah, I can give you a tour, but you got to wear a hard hat. And so we walked around like, wow, it's the coolest school I've ever been to. Yeah. What kind of a draw was it for you to be able to go to a place and start a program from scratch? Well, I, without a doubt, Stan Elliott, who was the first principal at, Sh at Lee Summit North High School, was the big inspiration to me to go there because he, he was just a great administrator and, uh, and I had the opportunity to work for several great principals, but he was an outstanding principal, very interested in, in both halves of education. The, the education part and the sports parts of education. So that was a big attraction. Gary Spaney has five daughters. They all play basketball. You mentioned having four daughters, all gymnasts. Your wife's been a USGA official in gymnastics for years. What was it like in the Wamsgans household? You're outnumbered five to one. You know what? It was fantastic. The girls were great. Uh, they were all different in their support of, of our football programs where we were, but they were all great. And I think it was advantageous to have daughters because Linda didn't mind taking them to dancing and to all those things that gymnasts do and to all that. I'm not sure she would have enjoyed taking little boys to baseball practice and football practice while we were gone coaching. So I think she enjoyed that a lot more. She's a great coach's wife. Your last year, at least I'm at North, 14th year, you get to the state playoffs. Was that the right, the right time to make an exit, go out on a high note when the program was in a good spot? Well, I think that was, and we, we had finally benefited from a rule change because for a long time, only one team from every district advanced and the entire time we were at least Summit North, we were with Rockhurst in the district, so I can tell you we did, did not advance. And that was the first year that they started taking two teams out of every district. So we were excited about our, we finished second a lot of times to Rockhurst. You guys have been friends so long and always played each other. How much would you talk over the course of a season or during a week? Uh, you know, multiple times we, we used to go out to breakfast together and until I went to Lee Summit, then it got the transportation distance got a little bit uh, of a factor, but we would always go out to breakfast together all the, during the times that we were both head coaches in the district and even after Tony went to Rockhurst we had breakfast together a lot. I remember when you left Lee Summit North and said at the time you know I'm, maybe I'm gonna go be an assistant coach somewhere that didn't happen because you make this seamless transition to the media what's PrepsKC.com now why was that such a good fit for you? You know what, uh, Dion called me the, that, that summer after I retired and he said, you know what, Coach, I'm going to start a high school football radio show uh, on KCWJ. And he said, I'd like for you to co-host that with me. And I go, I've never done that before. <laughs> I've always been on the other end. And I go, I would like to do that. And so it really it was great because I, we, 
we don't broadcast games, but we would just I would just go to whatever games I wanted to go to, watch those games, uh, go watch practice at various places for short periods of time. So I got to keep the contact with all of my coaching friends and, and go see them in games and be on the sideline. It was it was it made the transition out of coaching and teaching very easy. The high school coaches association came up with a hall of fame that began in 2015. A big first class. You're part of that with Coach Severino, Coach Purdy. How meaningful was it not just to be in, but to have comrades with you as well? I think what was great was to, having having had the benefit to have coached in the Kansas City area f starting in the 1960s all the way up through 2008. There were a lot of people who went in this first induction who I had coached against as an assistant coach and a head coach. So that was really neat. Guys that I had been associated with the whole time I was coaching. Of course, I've always called you Wams, Coach Wams, Coach. Never, ever called you Harold. Who calls you Harold? You know what? I have a second career that I've kind of been involved in since 1976. And I work in the CPA office in the tax department, and those people all call me Harold. Although there are some of my clients that come in who know that I'm a coach or that I was their coach, and they'll go, Coach Woms, and the girls in the office will go, <laughs> Coach Woms, who is that? And sometimes they call and ask for Coach Woms, and they go, Oh, you must have the wrong number. <laughs> <laughs> it's your alter ego. Yeah. Appreciate the time. Great seeing you. Thank you very much. Great to see you. It's a great opportunity.